Exploring North Dakota's big outdoors is a fun thing to do, and horseback riding through the woods and camping out under the stars are two of the most memorable things you can do there. Although it has a lot to offer, few people actually make the trip to North Dakota. Despite the fact that it is one of the least populated states in the country, and has a lot to offer in the way of scenery and wilderness. In contrast to the state's seemingly endless wheat fields in the east, the west is home to the breathtaking badlands in the spectacular Theodore Roosevelt National Park. With some great cities and towns to visit, the local events and festivals on offer are enjoyable and engaging ways to discover more about the people who live here and their rich culture, legacy, and history. Let's visit the top 10 attractions in North Dakota. Number 10, National Buffalo Museum. Outside the National Buffalo Museum, which is about halfway between Bismarck and Fargo, drivers on Interstate 94 can see the world's largest bison from a distance. It is made of concrete though. Its live counterparts graze nearby, including rare albino bison. The National Buffalo Museum teaches visitors all they need to know about the enormous creatures that once roamed the American West. The 6,000 square foot complex has many displays on the buffalo's near extinction in the American West and attempts to restore them to the landscape. A frontier village with a barber shop, chapel, pharmacy, jailhouse, schoolhouse, post office, and other historic buildings is also part of the museum. During the summer, visitors to Frontier Village may explore all of the historic structures, go on stagecoach and pony rides, and enjoy an old-fashioned soda fountain on site. Number 9. Mata Hay Trail The Mata Hay Trail is a must-see for outdoor enthusiasts and cyclists seeking things to do in North Dakota. The 144-mile path winds through some of the Badlands' most spectacular scenery. The trail can be used for biking, hiking, and horseback riding, but it is best known as one of the best places in the country for mountain biking. The route starts at the Burning Coal Vein Campground, approximately 30 miles south of Medora, and makes its way to the CC Campground, about 16 miles south of Watford City. Along the trail, there are nine campsites where explorers can tie up their horses and build a campfire. Bikers pass by towering buttes, flat grasslands, and western wonders like Medora and Old West Village with a lovely western vibe. Number 8. Fargo Theater The Fargo Theater is a structure listed on the National Register of Historic Places. This Art Deco movie theater, which first opened in the mid-1920s, hosts the Fargo Film Festival every year and puts on other events all year long. Film tickets are just $9, so you can see a historic architectural element while seeing a terrific play. The theater was created to entertain audiences as a cinema and vaudeville theater. It is now one of North Dakota's major attractions. Visitors may see a film, either independent or international, or attend a concert. The mighty Wurlitzer Pipe Organ, built in 1926, is the biggest theater organ between Minneapolis and Seattle. In addition to being the greatest spot in Fargo to see a live play, the theater is the city's most photographed destination. Number 7. Knife River Indian Villages National Historic Site The Knife River Indian Villages National Historic Site is in Stanton. It is on a site where Mandan and Hadatsa Indians used to live in the past. A handful of villages have been reconstructed in an effort to retain the culture. Today, this historic location exposes campers, field excursions, and people to the original ecosystem. The museum on the grounds of the Knife River Indian Village's historic site is a popular activity. This educational center shows off old things from the village and important cultural symbols of the people who live there. Visitors also enjoy traversing the village trail, exploring the restored earth lodge, and trekking the different paths that run across the gorgeous scenery. Throughout the year, many activities and events including games, craft exhibits, and ceremonies, take place at Knife River Indian Villages, bringing the historic site to life. Number 6. Fort Mandan Overlooks State Historic Site Have you ever wanted to walk in the footsteps of Lewis and Clark? From the Fort Mandan Overlook, you can see the area around where the two explorers built their winter headquarters in 1804 and 1805. Fort Mandan served as a cultural exchange site for Lewis and Clark and other explorers, as well as the region's Native Americans of the time. 
It's also where Lewis and Clark met Sacagawea, who would accompany them on the remainder of their West Coast trip. Today, Fort Mandan, which was named after the native people who lived there, is one of North Dakota's most popular tourist destinations, giving visitors the chance to do what the Corps of Discovery did all those years ago. We hope to bring you the top 10 best places to visit in each state. If you liked the video so far, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and turn on the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. Number 5. North Dakota Heritage Center At the North Dakota Heritage Center in Bismarck, you can learn about North Dakota's history from the Stone Age to the present day. Visitors to the Heritage Center can choose from four museum galleries to pursue. There are thousands of different exhibits, artifacts, and displays in the museum. These range from a cast of a Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton to a model of the Hubble Space Telescope. Another popular point of interest is the Northern Lights Atrium. This steel and glass piece of architecture welcomes people to the museum and puts on a show at night that is hard to miss. For warmer months, the immersive landscapes of the Capitol Arboretum Trail at the Heritage Center also draws some interest. Refreshments are available at the on-site James River Cafe. Number 4. Minot Minot has been called Magic City because it has grown and changed quickly since it was founded in 1886. This is why its suburbs are spread out in a rather random way. Even though downtown is a bit dirty and run down, it is slowly getting better as new businesses, stores, and restaurants open up. While Minot is a laid-back town, the city comes alive every July for the wonderful North Dakota State Fair. The fine museums in town, as well as the Roosevelt Zoo, are worth seeing. The Scandinavian Heritage Park is very interesting, and Goldstave Church is the clear highlight. Minot is well worth a visit if you're going across the desolate environment that surrounds it. Number 3. Plains Art Museum in Fargo's historic downtown area, the Plains Art Museum has some of the best paintings by local and national artists. The permanent collection has a lot of contemporary art, as well as traditional American Indian art and folk art. Throughout the year, the museum's 56,000 square foot facility hosts rotating exhibits. The Plains Art Museum offers youth and family events, as well as adult classes. The Plains Art Museum also has a lot of public art and gardens all over the city, including the historic Sodbuster sculpture in the downtown area. The museum is closed on Sundays and most significant holidays. All ages are welcome. About 10 miles from the viewpoint, there is a modern copy of Fort Mandan with an information center that people can tour. Number 2. Grand Forks Grand Forks, North Dakota's third largest city, is located on the banks of the wonderfully named Red River of the North, but is regrettably prone to floods. Its cosmopolitan center is a vibrant, life-filled college town. Since the devastating fire and flood in 1997, the city has been restored and rejuvenated. Grand Forks has a thriving art and cultural scene with several fantastic eateries. The city's open grounds and riverbank location mean there are plenty of enjoyable outdoor activities and water sports for tourists and residents alike. Number 1. Theodore Roosevelt National Park Theodore Roosevelt National Park is one of the highlights of any trip to North Dakota. The National Park, which was named after the naturalist, rancher, and 26th President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt, still has the views that drew him there. The Little Missouri River flows its way through the park's undulating hills and badlands. Visitors are welcome to stroll through the park or just drive through it to experience its natural beauty and free-roaming bison. Theodore Roosevelt National Park is divided into north and south units, as well as the Elkhorn Ranch unit, where Roosevelt spent a lot of time amid the badlands. People like to visit the north and south units of Theodore Roosevelt National Park because there are so many hiking trails and scenic routes. In the South Unit, the Painted Canyon Visitor Center has interesting information and one of the best views in the park. The Maltese Cross Cabin is in the South Unit, and it has been fixed up to look like it did when President Theodore Roosevelt lived there temporarily. Camping is a common activity in the park. Two parks provide RV and tent camping. And that's all for today. Which of these places would you like to visit next? And if you've already visited some of the places, how was your experience? 
let us know in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoy similar stuff, check out my other videos. And if you like it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video.